together. We're going verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to go to chapter 18, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asia his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the first ways of his father David, and sought not on to Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor in abundance. Chapter 18 and verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. That second part is what I'll be talking about today. Put something in there. Put your bulletin maybe in there. Keep that spot because we're going to be coming back to it. Let's pray. My Father, thank you for this precious word. Pray, Lord, that it will have its effect on each and every one, especially our school children. Father, we just thank you for a wonderful summer. Thank you for all the wonderful things and gifts that you give to us. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the garden and the things that we enjoy out of it. Thank you, Lord, for our children, what great gifts they are to us. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. The message today is your friends matter to God. How many of you remember when you were growing up, your parents said, you need to pick the right kind of friends? you remember hearing that? I did. Pick the right kind of friends. From time to time, you'll need one on whom you can depend. There's an old song I grew up with. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus and what a friend we have in Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer to you than a brother. That's what the scripture says. He sticks closer to you than a brother. It's so important that you have the right kind of friends, not just school students, but each and every one of you. I want to show you the importance of friendship, why it's important to God, who your friends are. Lord, before we can go any further, we ask you to prepare our hearts to receive what you want us to hear today. <coughs> Keep our minds and our hearts attuned to you today, attentive to you, so that we can receive what you want us to receive today. Help me, Lord, to explain it in a way that would be clear, simple, <coughs> that we can understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 17 and 18 so you can follow after me, so you can see where I get this information from. Who would you name as your closest friend today? If you had to name someone as your closest friend. This is a great concern to the Lord. Because your friendships speak very loudly. It speaks to God. It speaks to the world about the very condition of your heart. And have you ever thought to pray, Lord, what do you think of my friendships? Have you ever asked the Lord, are they pleasing to you? Or do they displease you? Or maybe you thought, well, maybe the Lord would just not be interested in that, but He really is. He really is, and as we go further, you'll see why. A righteous friend can be a blessing and a favor of God because He'll encourage you. He'll strengthen you to live a godly lifestyle. But if you have an unrighteous friend, 
It can be a binding chain. Every kind of evil that can lead you into some terrible bondages in your life. Now you think back about some of the friendships you had. About what I'm saying. When I use the word friend, I'm not referring to a family member such as a spouse, although my spouse is my best friend, or as a parent or a child, but the definition I want you to understand today as I use the word friend is someone with whom you are closely associated with. One in whom you naturally confide. A friend is someone with whom you can walk with and talk and bear your soul. And I'd like to add something else. Where you can just be yourself. You don't have to try to put on any front. You can just be yourself. And maybe sometimes you get extremely angry and bitter and upset. And you can go to that friend and talk to that friend. Because you see, a real friend doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because they understand that. They understand that. Because they've been through it yourself. You probably have various circles of friends. If you're in business, you would have those friends in the business and co-workers, partners, or perhaps clients. If you're in the social area, you'll have people that you're associated with on that level. And then there's some of those contacts with ungodly acquaintances that the Apostle Paul said it's impossible for us to avoid these kinds of contacts unless we just leave the world altogether. And we all have some of those contacts. But the Bible would encourage you to not to get closely associated in friendship with these contacts. I said they were acquaintances, I didn't say they were friends. If you pick them as friends, I'll show you what will happen. I'll give you some things to look for. How can you pick friends? The circle of friends that God cares about is your intimate circle. Your bosom buddies. These are the people that you love most who have an influence in your life. You're naturally attracted to one another. And you would probably agree on those things. So you feel safe in opening your heart to each other. You have an affinity with one another. That word affinity is why I wanted to use that. Because it's scripture uses it. Our hearts are constantly sending out signals. Messages that attract During a service, a pastor had observed this. He saw a connection that was made between two young drug addicts. One of them had dropped out of the rehab program and never really left go of his cocaine habit. And as he sat in the congregation, he studied everyone, and soon he had made a connection with another struggling addict. Isn't it strange how they can pick him out? After the service, the pastor saw the two young men walking down the street together, talking secretively. There had been an unholy attraction, and their spirits were connected. So now one of, other, one of either two things can happen. So the one who almost kicked the habit, or has it almost licked, will either stay that way and help the one who's still addicted, or the other might happen. The one who's still addicted may get the one back on track. Either one can happen. That's why it's important who you have as friends. The Bible tells us we're not to be ignorant concerning Satan's seductions. One of the devil's most common attacks against us is to bring us into an inner circle of friends, someone who is under deception, an agent of hell, who is on a mission to destroy you. And Satan uses this boy especially 
with lonely or compassionate Christians. He tries to turn an undiscerning person's kindness into an affinity with an evil spirit. And I'm going to show you that in the scripture here. I want to show you what happens when a godly person joins affinity with an unrighteous friend. So that would take us now to chapter 18 of 2 Chronicles in verse 1. We see there that this righteous man had riches, honors, and abundance. He joined affinity with Ahab. What did he do? He struck a friendship up. But you're going to see that this friendship went much deeper with Ahab. As you know, Ahab was a very wicked ruler. He was a wicked ruler. He was the ruler of Israel. And Jehoshaphat was the ruler of Judah. The Bible says Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. 1 Kings 16, 33. You'll find that 1 and 2 Chronicles and 1 and 2 Kings are partners. They belong together. You'll find the same things written in 1 and 2 Kings as you find in Chronicles. So when you study, study always those together. You might be saying, well, Pastor, how can a righteous king like Jehoshaphat end up joined with such an ungodly man? And I believe there's only one reason for this. It was part of a satanic plot to destroy the righteous Jehoshaphat. But it goes further than that. The devil knew which lineage Jesus Christ was going to come from. And so the devil did his best to try to destroy that entire lineage so that Christ would not come 